Hello there, Sharks. I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com, and today we are going through a hand featuring the poker video blogger Rampage Poker. He gets in there, battles hard, he is on a rampage. Y'all told me in the comments on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pokercoaching that sometimes Rampage gets in there and battles hard. He mixes it up, he gambles hard, he makes big calls, makes big folds, makes big bluffs. He is in there battling, and that makes for good content, which is why he has almost 100 thousand YouTube subscribers. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel. Click the description in the, click the description. Click the link in the description below. Check him out. Go there. Click like, click subscribe. You'll enjoy it. Let's get right to this interesting hand from 2-5 No Limit Texas Variety. All right, everyone. Pocket Kings. This is a, this is going to be a fun hand. We're on the button and the player on right in the cutoff opens it up to $20. This is the spot we've been waiting for. He's been very limp happy, so it seems like his raising range is going to be narrowed to very strong hands. So Rampage mentioned something here that a lot of people do not fully understand, and that is that just because someone plays a lot of hands does not mean that they have a wide range in all scenarios. Some players will limp a lot or call raises a lot, but then when a lot of money goes into the pot, or when they raise or when they re-raise, they usually just have something pretty good. So against those players, you have to realize that they may be playing 50% of hands, but their range of hands when they take the aggressive line, when they raise, may only be like the top 8% of hands or top 10% of hands. So keep that in mind as we move forward. So here, we're going to 3-bet and be a little more exploitative. We 3-bet 5x to $100. Normally, you'd 3-bet to about you know $70, $80 or so, playing 2,000 deep at 2-5 no limit. But because the opponent's range is probably stronger than normal, they're probably not going to fold it to a 3-bet. Or if they do fold it, they're going to be folding out a hand like Jack-9 suited, which is perfectly fine. So this is a good exploitative 3-bet. People always ask me, what do you do whenever your opponents call every time you re-raise? Well, re-raise bigger and re-raise a more linear range and just get money in the pot with the nuts, like Rampage is doing right here. The blinds fold and the cutoff makes the call and we're playing about 2,000-ish dollars deep. He covers me. Going to a flop, which comes 8, 3, 4, 2 hearts. And weird enough, this player throws out a lead and donks out $150. I've been playing with this guy all night and I've seen him do a lot of unorthodox things like committing stacks and leading out on every single flop, whether he had something or he had 6-3 offsuit for 6 high and barreling all three streets. So here, I'm not going to do anything but slow play this and slow down. He bets a really large amount and I'm comfortable with it. We make the call for 150. If he has air, I'm just going to let him hang himself. And if he has a draw, then it's a pretty bad price for a draw anyways. All of that makes a lot of sense. This is a scenario where some people think, all right, I'm going to raise immediately because I have the best hand and I want to get money in the pot and protect against draws. The thing is, though, is that if the opponent bets 150 into 207, it's already a pretty big bet, right? And if they are leading with any sort of reasonable strategy here, they're going to be very polarized to either really good made hands, perhaps, I don't know, queen eight and better, king eight and better, ace eight and better, something like that which we're actually not in all that great a shape against because the opponent could easily have eights, threes, twos, or four, three suited. You may say, didn't we say they're raising with a tighter range than normal? Yeah, but you don't know. Um, and then they're also going to be leading with good draws like ace, five of hearts that has plenty of equity against us. And then also some junky draws like seven, five of clubs or ace, two of clubs. And you don't really mind keeping those in the pot either. What a lot of people do in this scenario is they raise to 450. The opponent, who we think is loose and splashy, then rips in for all $2,000, and now you're in a guessing game for all your money. And, you know, you should probably call against most people, but some people will literally never be bluffing there, and you will be torching your money. So I think a better line is to just keep your opponent's range really wide. Also, if you just call here and the opponent does have ace-8, they may just think you have ace-king or something like that and decide to bet the turn and bet the river for a lot of money, and clearly that's just all going to go to you. So... I definitely like calling in this scenario for the reasons Rampage laid out. But we're not folding just yet, going to a turn which comes the deuce of diamonds. And again, he throws out another bet. He throws out a bet of $350. All right, $350 bet into a $507 pot. This is slightly off over here. Um, really, same logic applies on the turn that applies on the flop, except for now the board is a little more draw heavy, which is kind of annoying because now if he does have a hand like ace four of diamonds he has loads of outs if he has a hand like um, seven five he just picked up additional outs but again the problem is, is if you raise and the opponent jams on you it's not a good spot so another spot just to find the call 
And as much as I'd like to raise, there are a lot of draws out there. It's another sizable one. The issue is I just don't want to slow him down if he's just bluffing with legit zero equity, which I've seen him do a bunch. He could have hands like nine, seven of clubs. Don't forget. Some players will literally just get after it, right? Maybe it's jack, ten of clubs. Over cards and a backdoor straight draw. Eh, brick on the turn. What are you going to do? Fire away, right? So against players like that who will get after it, you definitely, definitely want to call. As your opponent's range contains more and more just absolute nonsense, you should be way, way, way more inclined to call because, like Rampage said, they are drawing dead. You do not want to raise and let them fold. So, um, yeah, this is the spot where we're just going to pray and hold, and we're going to play a big one. So toss in $350, we're going to a river. The river is the three of spades. This is literally amazing now that we're sitting with the best two pair combo, given he doesn't have aces. Could have aces. Don't be too quick to narrow their range. And even better, he's piling more money. And this time, it's $520. All right. Pot is currently, slightly off earlier, Pot is currently $1,207. Opponent bets $500 with about 1000 or so remaining in the stacks. What do we do with the Kings? How do you feel about this spot? Take a second, think about it. And then pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. Do we find a fold? Because, you know, you'd have to be insane to run a bluff here. Do we call? Or do we pile it all in? Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right. We have two options here. We can either call or go all in. We are not folding. Whenever all the draws miss and we beat some overvalues like ace eight or pocket nines or pocket jacks or pocket queens, we are absolutely not folding. Folding would be not just kind of bad, but atrociously bad. Now, one thing that is worth asking is, does the opponent ever have a three here? And I would venture to say probably not a whole lot of them. The opponent could have pocket eights. They could have pocket fours. They could have pocket threes. Those hands all make a whole lot of sense. So what, what are there, how many combinations of those are there? There are seven of those, right? Three eights, three fours, one three. Opponent could also have ace five suited. It's four of those, right? So that is 11 effective nut hands. They could have six five. It's four of those. It's 15 effective nut hands that we lose to. Is there anything else we really lose to here? I guess four three suited. It's one of those. 16 nut hands. So how many hands are there that our opponent will call with if we raise? Ideally, you want there to be a pretty good number of those. Well, if the opponent has ace eight, will they call if we shove it all in? I don't know. What do you think? I never know what they do with that hand in this spot whenever all the draws miss. What about um, pocket nines, pocket tens, pocket jacks? Those hands all make a lot of sense. Maybe pocket queens even, right? Nines, tens, jacks, and queens. There's 24 of those. And if the opponent has ace eight suited only, there's three of those. So that's 27 pretty good hands the opponent could reasonably have that would take this line that will very likely call a jam. Maybe they have 9-8 suited. Maybe they call a jam with 9-8 suited. I don't know. This is where you have to know your opponent. Some players will fold literally every hand worse than a three here if you raise. And if you know that to be the case, obviously you should not raise, right? Because then you're only going to get called when you're beat. But I think you will find that most loose, splashy, battling opponents are going to be willing to find a call when lots and lots of draws miss. And on this board, lots and lots of draws miss. So... You should be kind of willing to go for thinnish value if they will call with over pairs and ace eight and king eight suited, queen eight suited, whatever. Any eights they could have. So even though we do lose to a pretty good number of combinations of hands here, I think we need to shove. Now, before we see what Rampage did here, one thing you have to be aware of is that some people in the spot think that kings here are just the super duper nuts. And while they are good a lot of the time, some players really will fold out everything besides a three or better here. They really will, especially in the small stakes games because they think, well, you must have had ace three and you got there on me, or you trapped me with ace five. They're never going to assume you have many busted draws in your range, which maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, but this is a classic spot where I don't think people in Rampage of Shoes bluff all that often. And to be fair, if your opponents do not bluff all that often, you should in turn make an exploitative fold, right? So this is a spot where I'm not sure everyone's going to pay you off, even if they are loose and splashy and battly. You're going to find when 400 big blinds go in the pot, both players usually have something pretty decent. All right, let's see what happens. 
there is only one move to do in this situation against a player like this. And it's pretty much to go all in and hope he has something. So I look at my stack and it's a little bit under $1,500. So after thinking things over and Hollywooding just a little bit to make it look like I'm not nutted. Just a little bit, just a little bit. Don't Hollywood too much. If you Hollywood even a little bit too much, the subconscious mind of almost everyone goes off and says, something's not right here. So just a little bit. I rip it all in for an exact total of $1,478. This player doesn't love the situation, but he doesn't snap fold, which means he doesn't have six high, which is amazing. He thinks about it for a while. Six high. Six, five, four, three, two. Tosses in chips for a call. We show pocket kings and he shows pocket tens. And just like that, we scoop over a $4,000 pot our way in this nice little 2-5 game. I told you guys, this is not the typical 2-5 table. Nice. Good, good, good shove. And as you see here, Rampage wins all the money. What a lot of people do, I'm not going to necessarily say wrong, but probably a little bit too cautious in this scenario is they just call. They think, well, if I shove, they're never going to call me with worse. But if your opponent's loose and splashy and you are loose and splashy, as Rampage is, you will get paid off. There's a lot of value in having a loose, splashy, battling image because when you do actually make a good hand, you are way more likely to win a gigantic pot. That's going to be it for today. Thanks to Rampage Poker for letting me use this hand. If you all know any other video bloggers out there whose content you love, if they have a great hand you want me to analyze, put a link in the comments below. Uh, Timestamp me to it and I will try to make it happen. Thanks for being here. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. If you like this, click like, click subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. How would you like to have one of these championship bracelets from winning a major poker tournament? Well, here, I have plenty. I'll give you one of these. Oh. Couldn't quite get it to you. Instead, you're going to have to win your own. To get started, click the subscribe button.